No. What? What's the agenda for this meeting? No. There's one guy. Better one I need. Yeah, I never have heard from Yeah, I don't know. Did he ever call you? Yeah, I did. 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 I a.m. Quorum is established. All members of court apparent. Nobody signed up. No public members. No, no one signed up for public comments. Uh, it is grant work project workshop projects on uh, the American Rescue Plan money. Uh, he's not. Is he coming in? He should be. He should be coming in. Is that him? What? Uh, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's coming out here. He may be coming. So, is there anything while we're waiting on him? Is there anything from you guys? Uh, I just say it. I said it. Any anything <laughs> from you guys? Anything, Sandy? Where are we at? Well, I just made it. She give y'all. I give y'all a sheet. Here's your sheet, sir. Yeah, I got it. To show uh, <clears throat> what we've approved, how much it is, and the balance that we have. And they still haven't approved that up in Washington. At 3011. <laughs> they still debate that. Well, it's just sitting there right now. <laughs> and that's, that's, yeah, I don't know. But I think that could change a lot of decisions. It could change our, most all of them. Yeah, well, that'd give us a free hand to use that money however we want to use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah except for 991000 Yeah. And we want to use that much for uh, good stuff or for stuff that works. <clears throat> what you did this morning was just approve an engineer, uh, or truck, truck engineering, and they'll, they'll be getting <clears throat> Well, they grant works to court, you know, to to begin the design specifications. Uh, well, we got to do a contract oh. on that. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a, I mean, we what we and that was for this morning. What we approved, there's a cost on there yeah, the cost. Yes. of those engineers. Mm -hmm. And I went, you know, they they didn't ask for a cost. They were just asking for. Uh, they don't questions. have to come back with a contract for us to. Yeah. Approve what the cost on it, won't they? We just awarded the bid, and then we got like we've done with the mother people, they got to come back in. There'll be a contract. <laughs> I'm sure they'll tell us what to do, what our next step is. I was going to say, you don't need to send that to us. You need to go through grant, grant work. No, that's what we're hiding for. Huh? I said, I said, it's fascinating. Okay. I think he thinks it's the next Wednesday. Is he, what's he doing then? So we are we reaching him somehow or he just he just sent him a text. Oh, sent him a text. Okay. He sent him a text so hey. We're on we're on there. Line. There he comes. Here we there go. <clears throat>
Hey everyone, William Bass with uh, Grant Works here. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. We've been running a little late this morning. We oh, no worries. I'm I'm chilling. And, uh, but uh, we uh, you 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 can tell us where we're at if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just provide a little update here. Um, so in regards to the file conversion project, um, so I'm kind of <laughs> negotiating with uh, the directors at on my team because um, I did I brought it to our procurement specialist and they mentioned that um, going with uh, Texas Smart Buy might pose um, some issues uh, in terms of that procurement on there because as far as I understand from them, they mentioned that we don't or we're not able to see the contracts um, that are provided provided by Texas Smart Buy, um, and that we would have to file a uh, a uh, uh, I forgot what the the term was. It's unset my brain, but like a petition, an open records petition to get that contract, um, and to ensure that it has uh, two, the two CFR two hundred provisions that we need to have in there. Um, so that's, I'm kind of discussing on what the best steps, if we we're to do, if we were to go that route with the Texas smart buy, what we could do to ensure that it's compliance. Um, also back up a little bit on that point. Um, and that if we do go with Texas smart buy, we, we, Texas smart buy, we would need to get two more, uh, quotes. Um, and one of those quotes being from historically underutilized business, um, because that's always one of the requirements when using um, federal dollars in compliance with two CFR is that um, the historically underutilized businesses are you know, actively solicited and that we get quotes from them. Um, the other route for the file conversion project would be you know, putting together a solicitation package um, and soliciting it on their own. Um, with that, you know, we would be able to have get all of that 2 CFR 200 stuff in there. Um, but I know, you know, Texas Smart Buy would be the ideal uh, route since you guys are a member of them. And, you know, those, those, um, those you know, quotes are already there. They already exist in their system. So um, I'm kind of working with uh, my team um, the, and the directors and managers to see, you know, get their input on the, on the, the pros and cons of, of proceeding in, in either of those directions. Okay. Anyone um, have any questions? Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the, that's the status on that particular project. Um, the status on the, um, I was working with uh, Scott uh, Slatten um, last week um, to get, um, uh, to move forward with uh, the cybersecurity project. Um, I spoke to him uh, on the phone along with uh, a member, uh, the salesperson, the sales representative account, uh, executive of, um, I believe the person who got you a quote to give me a better understanding of, of what that software looked like. Um, I sent an email out to Scott um, last week. I'm sure he's been you know, busy uh, getting back into the office um, this week um, just to get um, my team, our, my procurement team just wanted a, um, a uh, just kind of like a high level scope of work uh, before we proceed because they mentioned with the software procurements, um, it can be kind of a sticky issues and we got to make sure that we're not purchasing stuff uh, from China, apparently they mentioned, and just some other um, uh, things that they want me to be aware of. So um, I'm moving forward with Scott, um, kind of back and forth with him um, to get that scope of work. Um, and we're also, Scott's working on getting um, a few additional uh, quotes for that project, um, for that cybersecurity, because we only have one quote. So I should have one quote with that. Um, um, uh, oh, what was that, Scott? I'm sorry. I should have uh, some multiple quotes coming in by the end of the week. It was uh, okay, slow, great. Slow to contact people over last week. Not, not a lot of people in the office, but uh, yeah, totally. I've, I've been told that I've got some quotes coming in. That, uh, <laughs> You know, so okay, great. Yeah, and if you could, Scott, if you could send me over that, you know, three a three sentence <laughs> scope of work. Um, my procurement team was asking for that. Um, 
even though I told them, you know, this is the scope, this is what we're looking for. They just wanted it in front of your mouth. Um, if you could send that over to me whenever you have a chance, um, that would that would help. Anyone else have anything else? Um, yeah, so the third project that we're moving forward with is uh, the radio tower project. Um, our client resources team was working with uh, Commissioner Laprade. Um, is there, I, I forgot off the top of my head what the deadline for the submissions um, for the RFQ was, Commissioner Laprade? The deadline we were looking at to have the dispatch completed is August 31st. Okay. But we got to be able to get through the RFPs, know what company we're going with so they can get started on that project in time to get it completed by August yeah. 31st. Right. Because yeah, I was just, I was just asking, I, 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 it's probably in my email, but what the date for, um, for engineers to submit RFQs was, um, if that had been established by our- We've got that. Board. We we got an RFQ the only one turned in. The court approved that today. Oh, oh, you already got him in. Okay. Now we still got whatever you got to do to get us the contracts and everything for them. We just received their qualifications and accepted the one that we had. Okay, so you guys you guys have selected uh, you selected a contractor. Okay, cool. Or sorry, an engineer. So where do we go from from here? Yeah. So um, in in regards to that uh, engineer selection, Grant Works um, is uh, uh, is create is working on, and we'll have that soon. The engineering contracts that we can provide um, that'll be used um, for Van between Van Zant and the engineering firm um, that will cover all of our um, two CFR two hundred bases. Um, we should have that um, within a week, I would say. Um, it's currently being reviewed um, by our um, by our director. So what we'll, I'll, I'll provide that to you, um, Commissioner Laprod, um, and that we could use um, to sign for the services between the engineering firm um, and, and the uh, Van Zandt County. That should be within about a week. So we'd be able to get right. it to regular schedule meet. Yeah. Have time to look at it before then. Yeah. So those are the three projects that we're currently working for. I know I've received an update regarding the uh, the jail uh, 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 remodel. You know, hooking the minimum security jail into the maximum security jail. Um, did did we want to? Did the the commissioner's court approve to move forward with that project? Did we want to get started on the RFQ process for that also? Uh, not at this time. Uh, we okay. We're still uh, we're still working on that project uh, and looking into. It. We got plenty of time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have so, two till you know twenty twenty four to obligate those right, funds. Yeah, we're so. still looking at that. Okay. And um, fourth, uh, the fourth point was uh, the roof project. Um, did the commissioner's court, um, have you guys just been mulling that over? Has that been approved yet? Um, did we want to move forward with that? Um, we, can, we could use ARP dollars for that, but it would need to come out of that um, revenue loss category that um, we have. And I know uh, Sandy has provided me with that document and there has been revenue loss. Um, so we could use that, whatever that amount is, um, which is, I think, a lot over what the roof would cost, I think. But um, Actually, I'll, I'll take that back. I'm not sure what the roof costs. I would have to look at the revenue loss, but we could use the amount of revenue loss for um, the roof project. I don't know if, if you, the commissioner's court has an had, had an opportunity to discuss that or if it had been uh, approved and we want to move forward with uh, that roof uh, project. No, we have Okay. Tim, you wanted to ask him about that Bill Washington? Oh, 3011. What's happening with that bill? You know? Yeah, are you, are you referring to the Senate bill 3011? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I So I'll, I'll just give you a, a quick rundown of the bill um, on what it's, it's going to do. Um, it's basically going to um, really expand and almost change the way that ARP funds can be used. 
Um, right now, you know, we have the specific categories in them and then we have revenue loss, which can be calculated, um, you know, we, which we can do a calculation to determine how much revenue we lost uh, we have and then of that amount can be spent on provision of government services. Um, so this new SB 3011, instead of communities who received art funds needing to do a calculation to determine how much revenue loss money they they how much revenue loss they incurred and then of that amount that's how much they can spend on you know more loose stuff um like you know broader infrastructure or police cars or equipment or whatever it might be um folks will automatically be granted and it's around 10 million dollars automatically in this revenue loss category so instead of you know, running the calculation and saying, oh, we have $100,000 in revenue loss. And then of our 10 million in our funds, we can use $100,000 in that broad revenue loss category. With when this bill passes, um, it will grant everyone, um, I'm pretty sure up to 10 million, automatically $10 million in revenue loss. So you could use your whole, um, your whole ARPA allotment, you know, which is, 10 million on this broad revenue loss category, which is what they refer to as provision of government services, which is kind of vague. It just means anything as long as the money is being spent and not being used to pay off um, debts um, or, or financial instruments or, or stored away or saved, as long as the money is being spent is basically what provision of government services mean. So yeah, basically, well, you know, you could use your whole allotment on, on a very much more broad range of things. Um, additionally, the second part of the bill involves infrastructure in that um, I'm not sure exactly what the new infrastructure will be. Um, I, I think pretty sure roads and bridges will be on there uh, also. Um, but also, you know, that 10 million could be used on infrastructure also so either one of those categories but you know some folks might have some big city might have 20 million so they could only use 10 million and then, you know have to go with a broader infrastructure category for the other other infrastructure um but essentially to summarize it's 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 just going to really open up the allowable uses of our funds you know it, and it was i'm on their web page right now and it was passed in the senate unanimously in uh uh, past Senate on 10 19 2021 and it's kind of been sitting in the house since then uh, I'm not exactly sure when it's going to pass I would hope sometime in Q1 here of 2022 but I, I really can't say uh, when it's going to pass um, so um, does that answer your question do you have any further questions regarding uh, yes it? no that's fine so uh, you anticipate it passing I, I would anticipate it passing, you know, it, it had unanimous support um, in, in in the Senate. Um, so I would anticipate it passing, you know, NACO on their website already has information uh, regarding it. Um, and also some uh, projections for how much uh, of this lost revenue category dollar amount each county will be getting. Um, can't find it off that website off the top of my head. Oh, let me see, SB three zero one one, make up. But um, I can I can forward this uh, you guys a link uh, uh, from NACO's website. It's just an overview of the what they're referring to this as a flexibility legislation. Um, but uh, it's pretty pretty informative, and yeah, it does have. Uh, because I'll tell you, I, bl I believe if that passes, that changes. Uh, I think that's a, I think that changes the way the thought process here in Vanzant County. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it it would because it, it, it's a, it's a, it would be a pretty drastic change um, in terms of that um, that ten million or near that figure of ten million. It might be eight or nine, but I'm. Sure, it's ten. There's again. There's a list on NACO's website of all the counties of how much in this revenue loss they'll be able to spend. Um, oh, here we go. Rear counties. Here's a. 
Well, Sandy provided us with a sheet uh, today that what we've already spent or, or what's been uh, okay. not not spent, but it's been allocated. Up, yeah. And and uh, we're left with uh, nine million six hundred and nine thousand. Yeah. After, after the after the uh, the file conversion and the cybersecurity. So if that if that comes through, that Senate bill comes through and the house passes it, then that means all that right there. I mean, it, yep. it'd be up to the commissioner's court how they want to. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm, I'm on NACO's website and Van, says Van Zant right here um, would receive, would be able to use 10 million um, in that, in that broad revenue loss uh, category. Um, yeah, the only thing we would need to make sure that we're doing, you know, that would still be on the table um, in, in terms of that, uh, spending those funds is making sure that we're following the 2 CFR 200 compliance um, and that we're purchasing, you know, getting quotes on small purchases. And if it's a large purchase, you know, putting a proposal together, if it's a, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, just following the, right. the rules and procedures and, and documenting all of the procurement process and you know, keeping those on file, et cetera, et cetera. So that um, would definitely want to make sure that we're, you know, continuing to do that um, and remind after the bill passing. Remind me, small purchase, large purchase, where's that break? Uh, yeah, so um, the federal government, there, there's three purchasing uh, categories. There's micro purchase, which is under $10,000. And then between $10,000 and $250,000, that's a small purchase. Uh, above $250,000, which is currently the acquisition threshold as defined by the federal government, that is a, a large purchase. So above $250,000, you know, that would be construction for construction projects. It requires sealed bids or non-construction uh, for project projects re require a you know, proposal okay. um, to be sent out. So you have any questions, Ms. Neal? No, you don't have any questions. You got to have one question. <laughs> any questions, Mr. Payne? Okay, you're going to get your information to him, Scott. Okay. Is there anything we need to cover? Thank you, Mr. Bass, for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, see you, everyone. Thanks for having me. Bye. You bet. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah, the motion by Commissioner West. <laughs> uh, second by <laughs> Commissioner Pearson. All in favor say aye. aye. We're adjourned. Uh, Keith.